Now, how could we apply what we just learned to maybe a marketing research project that you're working on? Where do summary or univariate statistical analysis really make sense? Well, there's two places. First, when we're reporting on the overall composition of our sample, so the demographic characteristics, most typically, we definitely use simple univariate statistics to report the composition of our gender, income, race, ethnicity, occupation, and so on. In addition, there's usually some key variables in our data set, right? Like if we're doing a study trying to measure the level of compulsive buying amongst people who play online video games, well, clearly we want to summarize the measures that we have in our study about compulsive buying. That's what I mean by key variables, the things that we're most interested in. Before we do more advanced and fancy analysis, those are the kind of variables that we should first provide a basic summary analysis of. This is good for us, the analyst, because now we develop an understanding of the kind of data we're dealing with, and it can be great practice for your reader or the person viewing your presentation. By purporting basic summary statistics of important variables first, they'll be in a better position to understand the more complex analysis that you're going to be doing later. Speaking of reporting summary statistics in a report, when we do this, we often combine, air quote, summary st statistic tables into one piece. So consider the following example here. There's actually two different univariate statistical analyses going on. One is a measurement for gender, and another is measurement for household income. In both cases, I'm reporting the frequency percentage, which of course, by doing that, I'm also reporting the mode, whichever percentage is highest. And since they're both reporting the same types of summary statistics, and they're both about the same topic, in other words, I'm summarizing the demographic composition of my sample, it makes sense that I would merge them into one integrated table. Uh, here you might notice that I also included the raw frequency count, not just the percentage that adds up to 100% for each variable, but also the raw count. Generally speaking, we're not that interested in raw counts of data. This is a very common mistake that new marketing researchers and analysts make. They report raw counts of things that we collect from our sample rather than the appropriate averages or percentages. Um, why is that? Well, remember, we're analyzing samples because we want to project the results onto the whole population. Therefore, raw number counts are not really that interesting because they just teach us about the composition of the sample. But in this instance here, when I'm summarizing the characteristics of my sample, a raw count may make sense. This probably would be the only time if I was summarizing the characteristics of my sample in my study or other analyses where I'd report the raw frequency counts. Another consideration, what about charts? Again, my experience has been that when it comes to univariate statistic reporting, S especially when we're talking about univariate statistics reporting of basic demographic variables, charts are drastically overused by students. They do, not have a, they do not have a good appropriate use. They tend to take up an enormous amount of space in the, in the report, and they're not really the focus of the study, and they really don't make the results any easier to understand. Let me show you an example of what I mean here. Here's a pretty classic one. So this student team uh, did a study that has that uh, marital status was something they measured as part of a summary statistic, um, but it was not actually part of the central part of their analysis. They weren't directly interested in someone's marital status, yet they utilized over half a page in a report with a pie chart. And as we'll continue to learn about, pie charts are usually the wrong decision for report, uh, visual reporting anyways. Uh, they report all the summary statistics for this marital status. So. In a 12-page report, half the page is dedicated to a pie chart that's hard to read, doesn't really illuminate more than you could simply write up in a few sentences, and it's not really about the main analysis that motivated their project. That's a bad use of space. Let's do one more example. Okay, for a written report, emphasis on written report, not a visual presentation, let's imagine we're reporting the following summary statistic about our sample composition. Which approach is superior? using a quarter or half a page for a simple pie chart that just says 55% of the people in our data set had uh, less than $100,000, or we just say 45% of respondents had an annual household income over 100K. That took 10 words. That's about a line in a report. And if you use this giant pie chart, taking up a whole bunch of space in your report, you still have to write the summary up 
charts alone are never sufficient. You have to describe them as well. Again, this doesn't make sense because it's not central to our analysis. It's just utilizing too much space. So when should you consider to include a summary chart or report for univariate statistics on a single variable? As we're going to see, there's all kinds of reasons to do charts for more complex analysis, but why can we justify its use for a much more simple univariate analysis? Well, the answer is, of course, it depends, like any good marketing question. Uh, but there's three things that we should consider. First, if the variable that you're interested in is of absolute central interest to your study, well, if it's the main focus of your analysis, it suddenly garners a lot more sense that you would consider showing those results visually, even if it's basic univariate statistics. Another good reason, showing the dispersion of a variable might be very important. In other words, the spread, the distribution of the data. Uh, this, is, this is where it makes sense because often the summary statistics available to us to summarize dispersion tend to not do a very good job for less sophisticated audiences. So showing uh, is better than just telling with a few words. The third reason is related to the second. If the dispersion of an important variable is very different than what management or readers might suspect it is, we probably want to show that dispersion to them. Let me give you an example from our craft beer data set and motivate it with a situation where we might want to show a chart for a univariate statistic analysis. If management was explicitly interested in knowing the distribution of how much money people were willing to pay for a six pack of stone beer, it would make much more sense that we would show it in a chart form. Here we have a simple frequency chart which each one of these bars sums up to the total 100% of our data set. By showing the dispersion of the data visually, some interesting insights emerge, right? We can see that a lot of the data is bunched around eight to $10. We have a small percentage of people who seem to be unwilling to pay much at all. But there's also at this upper tail here, a non-trivial percentage of individuals who are willing to spend a very high price for a six pack of beer. 12 to $13, which was relatively high when this data was collected. This type of visual analysis, because of how important it is for the managerial need in this situation, justifies its massive use of space.